Christians. What a privilege that we have hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. When the world is confused, the world is unable to see uh, a light uh, in the dark tunnel that everyone goes through. We have uh, the gladness of our heart, the joy of our Lord uh, encouraging us this morning. Amen. As we continue the word, uh, I would like to turn your attention to the word Pentecost. I'm not going to talk about a denomination, an organization or an institution, but I'm, to I'm going to talk about the fullness at Pentecost. That's my topic this morning. As the Christendom is celebrating today as the day of Pentecost according to the Christian calendar, I would like to bring some newness uh, from the word of God, what the Lord has given us, given in my heart to encourage all of us this morning. When we, uh, the, the fullness at Pentecost, that's what I, I'm speaking. So in the book of Acts, when we read, we find called to be witnesses of Christ at least 31 times mentioned. We are called to be witnesses of Christ 31 times. And then, continual la, uh, role of the uh, Holy Spirit in our lives, at least mentioned 56 times. So, it's a, a more number is mentioned that how Holy Spirit is involved and he is working and shaping in our lives. That is 56 times. So, as everyone is waiting for a change our freedom, you know, children, if you ask, what are the last week they said? We want our schools to be open. We want to meet, meet our friends, right? And ask about the parents. They said, we want to go out freely. We want to, you know, free from all this uh, mask and all those things. We want to be strong. So in other words, what is that word which comes improving or changes, right? Changes that we are looking forward, right? Thank God. Pentecost, even though, was a celebration as per uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 to 17, no need to write, we find the day after Sabbath, we find that they brought a sheaf to wave offering to the Lord, to show it to the Lord. And then from that day of the wave offering of the sheaf, counting seven full weeks, we find we reach the Pentecost or the 50th day, that is after Passover. So it was a big celebration for all the people, uh, especially the Jews, to come from different parts of the world to Jerusalem to celebrate the, the festival of Passover. So the significance of it, it represents harvest. It is harvest, right? And uh, the second significance of Pentecost is that it is also the Lord gave the law to Moses to, uh, in acceptance of that law every year during the time of Pentecost, children of God or people of God, the Jews, submit themselves in accepting the law of the Lord. Or rather, the revelation that was given through Moses about God, they accept it as uh, uh, during the time of Pentecost. So it's a very important time for the people of Jews. And, but at the same time, it's not only restricted for the Jews, it is also a special day for the church. Amen. Thank God, in the midst of all this pandemic, you know, when we are celebrating the Pentecost today, right, I would like to bring something what the Lord has laid in my heart. We find that as we turn to Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Listen carefully. One accord, right? And one place. Now, heaven was more interested for the people of God to be in one place. And also, 
in one accord. In other words, heaven was just looking to not the number of the people there, but they were, he, the heaven was looking to the hearts of the people, right? So it was one accord and one place. So what I wanted to drive here is, the first point is, wherever the presence of the Holy Spirit wants to come, he looks into the heart. He looks into the place where we are not divided. Amen. The first assurance I would like to give is that oneness and one place is very, very important. As long as we are divided, the Holy Spirit cannot come in its full form. Amen. So the first idea that I would like to, the presence of the Holy Spirit is the breakthrough on the day of Pentecost. And he is still making the big breakthrough on everyone who gathers in one place, in one accord. So let us not be divided. Hallelujah. Let nothing divide us. Amen. No opinions, no arguments, no logic, no differences separate us so that the mighty presence of the Holy Spirit, we, may, we shouldn't be missing it out. And that is what the day of Pentecost is. And when the Holy Spirit comes, what are the specialities that we see in the word of God in the same chapter? He fills us. Amen. He fills the place. It is, it is mentioned. He filled with the, see, he filled the whole house. Verse 2. He filled the whole house where they were sitting. So in other words, when he fills the house, what happens? All the emptiness in the house goes away. Amen. It could be uh, you, in today's uh, context, if you say, fear is there, loneliness is there, and uh, several other things are there. You know, all those things, when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, he fills. And so, you see, where light fills, darkness goes away, right? Where emptiness is there, if we fill with the perfume, you know, the whole room is filled the same way. Holy Spirit fills the whole house. Amen. Thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And uh, in verse 4, we find he filled all of them there personally also with the Holy Spirit. Right. So in other words, Holy Spirit can fill a person. Holy Spirit can fill houses. Amen. Hallelujah. And Pentecost is a breakthrough of the filling of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when he fills, fear vanishes. He fills, all the confusion in the lives of people disappears. If you ask the disciples, definitely they would have said, Jesus promised, but we are still waiting. We don't know when he is going to come. But the moment they were of one accord and at one place, all the confusions are removed. Thank God, even today, I declare, as we are going through the Pentecost, the season of Pentecost, the presence of the Holy Spirit is so strong, it can fill our houses, it can fill our hearts, it can fill and remove all emptiness and fears. Amen. I pray that the Holy Spirit, amen. And not only that, it is spectacular because you can hear, you can see, you can experience. Hallelujah. It, the, you know, the coming of the Holy Spirit is something where you can hear, you can see, and you can experience. And the gladness of it will be, you know, when do you speak boldly? When you are, when you, when we are filled with joy, we can speak. When do we sing? When we are filled with joy, we sing. So the Holy Spirit brings in all the joy in our lives. Uh, and then, uh, so he can fill us. That's the first thought that I would like to mention about Pentecost. Now, verse 5, when we read, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. So God is calling out the devout men. Thank God. There are unbelief. There is all the other things which are taking place in this world. But I would like to tell you, all those who 
are willing to be filled with the Holy Spirit, they will be devoted people and they will be gathering to see his presence and experience uh, his presence. And, you know, what is the reaction? You see, where, where, where we find in verse 7, they were amazed and marveled, amazed that wherever the Holy Spirit is there, there is amazement. Hallelujah. And people will marvel. Hallelujah. Nobody can stop them. The world's rules and regulations, the restrictions cannot stop because people are going to see something new. Hallelujah. And I call upon the presence of the Holy Spirit in a greater way as we will have a breakthrough after this Pentecost. Don't expect gloom or don't expect something, you know, what the world is predicting. Heaven has a choice to fill us, I mean, with something that we will amaze and we will marvel at. Hallelujah. That's the first thing. And the second thing we find in, uh, as we experience Pentecost, there is a special preaching taking place. You know, Peter stood up along, verse 14 when we read, Peter standing up with the 11. Now, even though there were 11 people, only one preached, right? All did not preach there. Peter only preached. What does it mean? It means there was an agreement of what Peter was about to say. Amen. Till now, nobody preached. Maybe John the Baptist preached and Jesus preached. But this, it is the church age or Pentecost brought a breakthrough for his people to preach. Hallelujah. What the Lord is doing, what the Lord is going to do, it is going to be declared in a great way. Hallelujah. Praise God for the breakthrough of preaching. Amen. You know, if you see about the preaching, what takes place, you know, we find is it is mentioned, it is mentioned, he raised his voice. In other words, he was not speaking slowly, but he was full of the spirit, full of strength. And he was raising his voice with all of his might. He was preaching. The second thing that we find here is that uh, he was making known what God had revealed. He couldn't hide what they saw or what he saw and what they experienced, what they heard. And so it is a breakthrough of the declaration of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Speak out. Pentecost is speaking out what God is going to do and what God is doing right now. Hallelujah. It's a breakthrough. Nobody can stop it. The world cannot stop it. Amen. We find uh, that, uh, you know, and then it is a message of conviction. In the same way, we find, uh, let this be known to you and heed my words. What I am preaching, what I am speaking today, is something the Lord has done, and it is a message of conviction. Hallelujah. In other words, I would like to declare today, God is going to raise many Peters, amen, who will come out in the days to come, who will not be preaching about traditions, who will declare about what the Lord is going to do and what the Lord has done convincingly. Hallelujah. It is an era of the preaching. Amen. With the with boldness, with words of the power of the Holy Spirit to convince the world what the Lord is going to do. Hallelujah. I declare today that a season is coming that many Peters will raise up and many will agree and stand up with him and pray and thank him. Lord, speak through him. Speak through him. And we agree with whatever he speaks. Hallelujah. So in other words, People will be convicted of their sinful ways. Of course, some were receptive and some were resistant also. You see, some were mocking. Some were asking, what is this? Are they filled with wine? Did they drink? But there were people who were marveled, marveling. You see, these are the words which are used. Marvel, amaze, perplex, confused, mocking. These are all the words which I... I'm just reading from verse 12 onwards. That is, uh, you see, all those words are used about the preaching that took place 
or the coming of the Holy Spirit. So it's going to be an era. Peter was never trained theologically or in his preaching methodology, but the Holy Spirit enriched him, gave the boldness, and with the power to convict people about their sinful lives and commit themselves to Jesus Christ. And I would like to tell you, in the days to come, there is going to be special preachings done by people. Hallelujah. And you may be one of them, and your children may be one of them, that they are going to stand up for, the, for Jesus Christ about what the Holy Spirit is doing. That's the second theme. The third theme that I would like to mention is, it is an ongoing promise for our generation. Pentecost is not a one-day event. It is an ongoing promise for our generation. How do I say that? As we read in verse 17, we find Peter is declaring the fact that, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It was not for one day. It was for an ongoing movement that he is prophesying to the generations. What do I say by this? Don't determine and don't declare what your children can do. Because heaven is declaring that, that what do we find here? Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Let me state it right now. Don't underwrite and underestimate prophecy. God is going to give to your generation the gift of prophecy. Hallelujah. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. It is an ongoing promise of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the day of Pentecost is released and your sons and daughters, whether you like it or not, they are going to prophesy in this generation. Hallelujah. If you are only open in your spirit, it is the responsibility of the Lord to pour out the spirit and strengthen your sons and daughters to prophesy to the world, prophesy to the church and to those who are willing to listen to the prophecy. Amen. And the second thing that we find is uh, young men are going to see dreams. People don't believe in visions and dreams. Uh, but I would like to tell you, God is going to pour out his visions upon young men. Hallelujah. Amen. Parents, you have never heard your young men like this. Hallelujah. It is the promise. Uh, Pentecost is the day of promise. And young men are going to receive visions about what the Lord is going to do in this world here afterwards. Amen. And then, old men, if you have never dreamt a dream from God, which originates from God, the seasons are just opening. You are going to dream the dreams that God is willing to give you. Hallelujah. And then, we find that I will pour out my spirit on those days, uh, even upon the men servants and maid servants uh, who will prophesy. See, so it starts with prophecy and it ends with prophecy, but there are category of people involved in, a, in the ongoing promise of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Parents, don't underestimate your children. Hallelujah. Don't ever, oh, hallelujah, think that, uh, oh, they are, they are not that much useful or useless or words like that. I would like to declare according to what, Pentecost is. Pentecost is not a denomination. It is an experience. Hallelujah. But we have made it a denomination. We have made it an institution. And so many have crept inside the, the denomination called Pentecost without the experience of the Pentecost. Hallelujah. But I would like to tell you, God is setting up Pentecost as an ongoing promise where your children are going to prophesy Oh, young men are going to see visions. Oh, hallelujah. Old men are going to see dreams. And the men servants and maid servants, they are going to prophesy. And not only that, we are going to see wonders in heaven. Amen. Verse 19. Oh, wonders are going to take place in the days to come. Signs on the earth are going to take place. Hallelujah. And uh, it will be like this. Uh, whoever calls... On the Lord, whoever calls on the Lord, they will be saved. In other words, 
it will be a day of salvation or explosion of salvation amen the methodology that the holy spirit is going to use after the day of pentecost is salvation will be made available for everyone and people are going to get saved in a greater way hallelujah amen hallelujah what a privilege and as we as the world declares today let me once again repeat all the three things that i have said the presence of the holy spirit in a immeasurable way number two preaching like peter in a very powerful convincing way it is going to take place in the days to come number three the ongoing promises for our generation is going to be real and we are going to see i mean the salvation is so near to all those who are believing and listening to the gospel and that is what exactly i mean the fullness at pentecost amen what a privilege we are experiencing that pentecost today hallelujah and uh, era is taking era is opening right now where god is going to commission his angels god is going to send oh his power in an immeasurable way shall we look forward in the midst of closed situation in the midst of all this pandemic and confusion what amen let our eyes be open our spiritual eyes be open may the lord strengthen us even through this words let us pray